Yeah. Uh, I'd now like to move us to um, a presentation from Michelle Clark, who's the Assistant Director for the Office for Women. Um, Michelle was appointed Assistant Director for the Office for Women, part of Fairer Victoria in early 2019. Uh, Michelle's an experienced public servant and passionate about delivering strategic and actionable policy. Michelle has worked across multiple portfolios in Victoria, the Commonwealth and for the UK government. Her varied roles have included international counter-terrorism investigations, intergovernmental relations and community security and emergency management. In her current role, Michelle is responsible for the primary prevention work undertaken by the Office for Women, including the delivery of Victoria's Free from um, Violence primary prevention strategy. I'd like to welcome Michelle. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, thanks so much for organising this. It was really sad not to go ahead back in, I think it was November when we were all due to do this. So it's great that we're able to do this, albeit in a different forum. So thank you very much to the Mali Family Violence Executive for hosting this forum and for inviting me to speak. Um, as outlined, I'm the Assistant Director for Primary Prevention in the Office for Women. So the Office for Women within Department of Premier and Cabinet is responsible for policy to promote gender equality and prevent family violence and all forms of violence against women. And we work with other government departments, the private sector and community to improve outcomes for women and girls. I had prepared the presentation that I had that I did in um, Mildura, and it, it will talk about the primary prevention journey in Australia, what the Free From Violence strategy is doing through the First Action Plan and how we're going so far. But I'm probably gonna skip through this quite quickly because I think actually at the end, talking a little bit about our priorities for the next year and some of our thinking about our ability to achieve those priorities given what we're all experiencing and the, the changed nature of our work over the next few months I think um, would be a more helpful discussion at this point as well as in the last few months we've actually had the Gender Equality Act um, receive royal assent which hadn't happened in November when I spoke to Mildura so I'll touch a little bit on that as well because that's a really important and um, historic event for Victoria that will hopefully help bring about that cultural change in the space that we all work. So I don't know if my slides are hopefully around, if they work. Am I supposed to do something with them or will they just magically appear? Oh, they're coming, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'll just continue, I'll start anyway. So it look, the most, most thing is it's important for us to all to recognize that um, the Royal Commission wasn't the beginning of this journey. I know a lot of people in this sector and in your organisations have been working on this for quite some time. We do use it as a kind of a key starting point uh, for when really there was a concerted effort and a, a big momentum in government and investment in government into this piece of work. So that's hence the slide you'll see there. It starts really with the, um, has prior to the Royal Commission, but then hits quite heavily with the Royal Commission kind of in the middle there. Um, so 2015, the Change the Story framework being launched by Our Watch and Vic Health and Anne Rose was really that world first integrated national approach to preventing violence against women and their children. And we still base a lot of our thinking on Change the Story. It is, it is still the, absolutely the best evidence base that we have to think about this work and um, trying to apply that thinking to different types of cohorts and different types of settings and different types of situations is something that we're just building on that wonderful foundation that our Watch Vic Health and Anne Rose were able to produce. So primary prevention did get a big call out in the Royal Commission. They um, have a couple of recommendations specifically around primary prevention and ensuring that it's a key part of the government's response going forward. It was acknowledged that it's a long-term journey of cultural change and we all know that. Um, so a couple of major things have been implemented in the last few years that have been trying to institute this change. So there was the 10 year plan ending family violence, Victoria's plan for change, which was November, 2016. Safe and strong, which are, is, is our Victorian gender equality strategy. And that was December, 2016. Free from violence, um, which is my focus. And that was released in May, 2017. 
our first action plan was then released in January 2018. And um, an important part is to is the Delta Safe Our Way, which was released in October 2018. Um, and then, as I mentioned, the um, the Act, the Gender Equality Act, is a big milestone for us as well in this journey. So the Free From Violence strategy is our overarching framework. Um, you've probably all seen the framework. It's certainly online. If you haven't, I urge you to go and have a read and and because it really does set out what we're trying to achieve, how we're going to do it. Um, it highlights the key components, um, including the drivers of violence, working with the whole community. It talks about what needs to be put in place and what we're aiming to achieve and how we'll know we're successful. Um, but it really is predicated on the fact that this is a 10 year kind of long term plan. And I think in the next, if I can move to the next slide, it gives a sense of where we are in the journey, um, which is very early. Um, we are really cognizant of the fact, oh, actually, sorry, it's even the next one. I've moved past a few. This is one. So we're still in phase one at the moment, which is that first action plan building up on what works and um, building on what we know and, and trying to think about scale up. The, we really only completed one full year in our Free From Violence First Action Plan and we released our first report at the end of last year, which I again recommend if you haven't had a look to have a look because it captures the breadth of activity that we have been undertaking and the breadth of investment. Um, it's been a little bit of a thousand flowers blooming, I think, for year one. And the challenge for us as we go into year two and to year three and the end of this phase one, leading up to the next action plan, which will probably be developed in 2022, is how do we hone our investment? How do we um, figure out what works and how do we get the most effective outcomes for our investment? It's not sustainable for us to continue to fund many, 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 many projects of many, many different settings. We really need to um, pick a couple of major ones that we think are gonna have the biggest impact and try and support that to the greatest extent possible. And one of the really key things that we've been doing over the last few months is engaging with the other parts of the Victorian government that do prevention work. Um, and I noticed in following Tracy's presentation, there was a question about respectful relationships. Respectful relationships is the biggest investment the Victorian government has made in prevention um, from, a, from a financial perspective. And so we're working really closely with DET um, to see how our investment can actually assist their investment and the two can start to work cohesively together, both in the messages that they're giving, but also um, respectful relationships doesn't have much of a focus on parents, whereas we could bring in other programs that do pick up on that but speaks the same language and is um, kind of reinforcing to be able to amplify the investments in the different sectors so there's a internal to government um, primary prevention group which uh, has respect victoria ourselves det police department of health and human services everyone who's interested in the prevention space and who has, has any investment in the prevention space to try and understand that we're all working towards a common goal, that we've got consistency of approach when it comes to stakeholders and that our investment is all based on the same principles and has the same evidence um, standards that we apply to it. So we're starting to build up a more whole of government picture, which is um, really important in the time when they will probably be more constraint on the amount of money that we get towards family violence and um, it's certainly the government is at the point that we need to show that what we're doing is having impact um, to encourage further investment um, so that's probably the next one the next slide if you don't mind is just a little bit of the key facts and figures from our year one report and um, you'll see that we, oh, my lights just went off. Hmm. Um, you'll see that there's a couple of things in there. So it talks about the campaigns in Respect Victoria. Establishing Respect Victoria was one of the, the biggest and most influential outcomes um, in the last few years. So we're really excited about Respect Victoria um, and the work that they're doing and working closely with them on that. I won't go into the facts and figures because I think that if you're interested, it's probably something you can have a look at online because um, it's certainly um, available. Um, so the next one is our current 
strategy activities. So as I said, we're really keen on making sure that we've got um, consistency across the Victorian government, but also that we're looking at the life cycle. What is a how what activities are we undertaking in infancy to early childhood? What's in childhood? What's in adolescence, early childhood, adulthood through to older adulthood? We're trying we're doing that mapping exercise um, to really make sure that we're targeting where we need to be targeting and leveraging off the other activities that are going on. And um, working really closely with local government and some of the infrastructure that exists like women's health services already to understand what they've been doing and how we can assist to support them. I think after being in this role for almost a year now, what has become incredibly stark to me is that communities know best what will work in their communities, what programs will work best in their communities, what messages will work best in their communities and what the needs of their communities are. So we are trying to move to a model that is much more empowering local government, local women's health services, local organisations to make those decisions and provide as much support, capability building and funding as we can um, to have that kind of self-determination aspect in what's happening in your, your own communities. So just, um, as I said, to conclude, I just wanted to give you a sense of the Gender Equality Act and what our next steps are. So the, gen the Act received royal assent on the 25th of February this year, which is super exciting. So it targets gender inequality, including the drivers of the gender pay gap. And it will require over 300 entities across the Victorian public service local councils and universities to take positive action to achieve workplace gender equality and promote gender equality in the wider community through their policies, programs and services. That's a bit of a jargony way of saying that um, the thinking behind it is that sunlight is the best disinfectant, that if we shine a light and really make public what type of policies public organisations have, what's their ratio of workers at what level, what, how the salary gap is going, um, that it will start to drive change because that there will have to be a reporting um, mechanism for that. But one of the best things about it is that it established the Public Sector Gender Equality Commissioner and the Commissioner will have a really important role not only in actually um, monitoring and it will have some compliance powers as well but also educating and working with organizations to do that gender analysis on all their policies. Um, even within DPC and the public sector as an example um, with all the COVID-19 messaging that's gone out to staff we noticed that there had been no thought about if you are at home looking after children because schools are closed, but you're not self-isolated and you're not sick, um, but what kind of leave is available to that cohort? Because let's face it, that's the burden is going to fall on women in primarily in that role. So um, it's it's definitely still a journey, I think, and and even within the public sector, which is probably at the forefront of a lot of these policies, there's still that gender lens just needs to be overlaid on at every point when we um, formulate policy for whatever reason to make sure that we're picking up the impact on women that may not be immediately obvious. The other really exciting thing about the Gender Equality Act, um, it's worth mentioning, is the procurement um, aspect of it. So government is a huge purchaser and, and has an, an amazing power to influence the community through its use of its money. Um, and the government already has what's called a social procurement framework and that encourages its investment to companies that have um, diversity um, as part of their thinking and um, so the procurement guidelines now in the Act will allow that to be taken into account. Um, so government can work with companies to actually say, we would love to support you and give you this contract, but what are you doing with regards to the gender pay gap? How are you supporting women in the workforce? What are you doing to make sure you've got policies in place um, that actually not only support women in the workforce, but support men to have a more flexible work-life balance and that we're creating together a different kind of society and community, which I think is really exciting. Um, just a little bit on COVID-19, because um, it's obviously all that we're thinking about at the moment and I've spent my last week um, just immersed entirely. Um, 
is that we've been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of talking to Respect Victoria, to Family Safety Victoria about the impact on women and, and the impact is going to be immense, not only in the family violence context, which is certainly going to be pretty scary and um, very difficult to manage, but also the economic impact on women, the impact on older women, um, this caring responsibilities, as I mentioned, that will affect women more predominantly than men. Um, we have been focusing our efforts at the moment on supporting the minister um, to have those conversations with her cabinet colleagues and to make sure that those issues are actually front and center of their decisions and their deliberations and their discussions when they're thinking about how best to get the Victorian community through this. The other thing we've been doing is working really closely with other states and territories to influence the Commonwealth in its thinking and to try and ensure that we're embedding into the response to this, that gendered lens that we know is really important and certainly going to play out. So um, it's fabulous that Respect Victoria um, is going to provide something on the prevention messages. I think that's really important. Um, and Family Safety Victoria is the lead on response issues. So um, we see our, our role as really important to make sure that we're bringing it to, all together for the minister and providing her the best information she can to articulate that. And then ensuring that we're supporting our partners, our funded partners um, through this time and um, that we're working with them to make sure that any projects we had funded or we had on the cards that if they're not able to be uh, delivered in the next six months that we work with them to make sure that you know, we extend the contract. So we make, uh, we make it work because we're really aware that most of the workforce we support is women as well. Um, so we don't want to jeopardize any of those organizations in this time. I think it's still, it's very much a moving feast still. Um, we're certainly trying to influence to get more information out about how you can be supporting your communities or what you could be doing and thinking, um, with respect to your programs and your activities over the next few months. So um, we're going to be communicating with a lot of our key stakeholders very soon on that. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's really important for us. There's been a lot of momentum and we're really concerned and I'm sure you are as well, that momentum will be lost in this type of circumstance. So we will be using the time as strategically as possible to prepare for when we come out of the other side and hitting the ground running again and making sure that we pick up where we left off and that, that we haven't lost this incredibly important issue into a different, incredibly important critical issue. Um, I'll probably will leave it there because I'm very conscious of the time. Um, I'm very happy to answer a few questions if you have any, um, but equally, if anybody would like to contact me directly outside of this to have a chat about anything, I'm very happy for that too. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Um, it's great to hear um, the work that's happening across the Office for Women and great to hear that you're looking to empower local organisations in the local setting and that's certainly a, um, a, a big thing here in the Southern Mallee. We connect across the three local government areas but have our place-based groups which you'll hear about um, their activity in a moment but um, you know how that how those groups can be empowered as a partnership, I think is really important too. Um, we haven't had questions come up on the, on the chat, um, but is there any, any, does anyone want to take a, a quick moment to ask a question? I'm not seeing or hearing anything. So, Thank you very much, Michelle. And there may be other questions. If people do have some questions, feel free to use the, the chat function um, throughout the morning. Um, and we will look to get back to um, answering them either later in the session or um, following up outside this forum, after the forum. So thank you.